Why are some of the world's greatest artworks locked up in secret maximum security vaults? And how are people getting richer off of this heist? We're here to break down how the rich live above the law, set up systems to do it, and fuck over the rest of us. Welcome to Offshore. When you think of art heist, you probably think of George Clooney devising clever schemes to get around authorities. Well, the ultra rich are stealing art in less cool, but way more infuriating ways. How and why are the rich doing this? And where's all the art going? Welcome to the Geneva Freeport. Please keep your arms, legs, and taxable capital gains in the Freeport at all times. A Freeport is basically a fortress of tax-free, high-security, secretive offshore storage. There are tons of them in the world, like little offshore hidey holes where anything goes. The idea goes back to antiquity, like the Greek island of Delos. The Romans turned into a free port around 166 BC and became a sexy, wild, rowdy trading hub for the wealthy in the Mediterranean region. They traded 10,000 slaves a day. Look, free ports are a common sense idea. If you're transporting wheat from say, Ukraine to the United Kingdom and have to stop in Italy to get gas, you shouldn't have to pay Italian taxes on goods that are still in transit to their final destination. The rich locked onto this common sense system and twisted it to fit their needs. Systems meant to keep goods from being double taxed are often abused in the offshore to make goods never taxed. Freeports sprung up around the world as investors looked for more black holes for dodging taxes, laundering monies, or fuck it, why not? Financing extremists. Look out, it's another tax black hole! Ah! Except for this time, you can also fund extremism and stuff! Ah! There's one man most often credited for turning free ports from grain storage to offshore hideouts for billionaire art collectors. Yves Bouvier, also known as the king of free ports. Bouvier is a Swiss national whose family was in the furniture storage and art transport business. As Swiss banks lost their prestige as tax havens, he had the genius idea to combine tax-free ports, originally meant for temporary storage of perishable items, with the most unregulated, opaque, ultra-rich market in the world, art. He's even gone on to open his own free ports in Singapore and Luxembourg. More on him later. Let's continue our tour of the Geneva Freeport, shall we? It started in 1888, and it's now essentially a fortress. With meticulous temperature and humidity controls, state-of-the-art security with rooms conceived as impenetrable vaults, explosive-resistant armored doors, and biometric locks. This is where I'd want to give you a detailed tour of what we believe to be in the Geneva Freeport, but I can't. And that's a huge reason why this place has thrived. The art industry is one of the most secretive industries in the world. And the Geneva Freeport, in the same tradition as Swiss banks, is a black box of secrets. They weren't even legally required to keep an inventory of what's in here until 2007. I can also tell you that the masterpieces secretly kept behind these walls have an estimated value of $100 billion. It's estimated the number of artworks stored in the Freeport is around 1.2 million. For comparison, the MoMA in New York City has about 200,000 pieces. Reports estimate up to 1,000 Picassos at the Geneva Freeport. And it's not just art either. There are all types of luxury items growing in value tax-free, including classic cars, luxury watches, wines, and ancient Egyptian and Roman artifacts. All right, folks, one final note before we end our tour of the Geneva Freeport. Before entering this building, you were in Geneva, Switzerland. But until 2007, the country of Switzerland didn't even recognize this building as its own territory. No one recognized it. You're here, but you're not. You exist, but we're not tethered by a nation state, morals, or reality. You're in the offshore now, and you're never, ever going to leave. So how did we get to this? How do we get to world-renowned art coming off walls and getting placed in dark layers to accumulate value tax-free instead of being enjoyed by anyone at all? It's hard to pinpoint what the moment was that art turned from an enjoyable trophy of the rich 
to a pure investment vehicle of ultra-rich individuals and Wall Street firms. I can tell you this though, in 2015, Lawrence Fink, chairman of BlackRock, the largest investment firm in the world, said contemporary art had usurped gold as a store of wealth, and it's picking up steam. The top 10 most expensive paintings ever sold happened in the last 15 years, even if you adjust for inflation. The Car Players by Paul Cezanne sold for more than $250 million. Interchange by William D. Cooney sold for an estimated $300 million. Finally, number one all time on the list of most expensive paintings ever sold was the Salvador Mundi by Leonardo da Vinci, bought for $450 million by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman which is reportedly displayed on his yacht. Oh, check out that cleavage on Jesus. Hmm, hubba hubba. These are just the prices we know. And that gets us to the biggest reason art has exploded as an investment asset over the last several decades. The art market is the least regulated market in the world. Auction houses have no obligation to report who's selling a piece of art or who's buying a piece of art. Often in private sales, a piece of art can be sold from one shell company to another, all using cash. And the IRS relies on these private parties to self-report their profits. Good fucking luck with that. The money laundering and tax fraud elements of the offshore are awful. But what I always find the most interesting about this thing is what's technically legal. That's where the free ports thrive. If all the booming art investment returns and the art market being incredibly underregulated wasn't enough, how about I put a little cherry on top. It's all tax free. <laughs> I promised you a heist, so here it is. <laughs> I go to an auction for a piece of art. I outbid any museum or institution that might plan on displaying that art. I can pay a much higher price because I have one little trick up my sleeve. I don't pay taxes. As soon as I get my hands on the art, I'm gone. No alarms tripped, no evidence left behind. In fact, I bought it through a shell corporation with cash, so there's no record of my involvement. Next, I stash my goods in the safest place any crook could dream of, a tax-free port. I mean, it's crazy this place even exists. Like, it's like a legal place for villains, like a country club to hide all my loot. And we just hang out and we play cards and we talk, what'd you steal? I stole this, whatever. You can't talk about it. it's a shell corporation, it's cash. All you have to do is claim your stash is permanently in transit and they can't touch you. I sit in those goods for a couple years, watch that thing skyrocket price, higher than any traditional investment could. Without the goods ever leaving the Freeport, I find a buyer willing to pay a higher price. He buys it through a shell corporation with cash too, just like me. Because using a shell corporation is like the billionaire version of putting on a ski mask. <sighs> the only people that know about this deal are your shell corporation, my shell corporation and God above. The buyer and seller don't even know who each other are. And just like that, boom, I'm out, scot-free. Cash in hand, no sales tax, no capital gains tax, the art stays hidden and never seen again. Another successful offshore heist. All that anonymity can break when the ultra-rich go after each other. We'd love a juicy rich guy feud that exposes all their schemes. In 2015, that's what happened. Back to Yves Bouvier. For many years, Bouvier used his status as the Freeport King to gain insider knowledge of who owned what pieces of art. He would claim to be acting as a broker for a buyer taking a 2% cut, while in reality, he would be buying the painting himself, then resell that painting to his client for huge profit margins, sometimes as high as $100 million on one painting. It all hit newspapers when his client Russian oligarch Dmitry Robla sued him for fraud. Robolev had bought Reclining Nude with Blue Cushion by Mo Digliani for $118 million. By pure luck, Robolev was at a party in St. Bart's and met someone that knew the real seller of the painting. They told him that the painting was actually sold for $93.5 million. He got screwed. Bouvier had scammed him of $24.5 million on this one painting and much more over the 34 other paintings they did business on. Robolev accused Bouvier of stiffing him out of more than $1 billion throughout the course of their relationship. Bouvier was eventually indicted on fraud and money laundering charges. We love to see it. This is the world we're dealing with, a world so secret and so rich that hundreds of millions of dollars can be scammed and no one even fucking notices. They only found out about this because they met at a party one day. This is just the tip of the iceberg. We have no idea what else is going on out there. 
the kryptonite of the offshore is public knowledge. Criminal investigations into stolen goods in the Geneva Freeport led to somewhat tighter regulations. But in those regulations, there are loopholes. If you don't like those loopholes, well, you can take your business to another Freeport. The most messed up part of this is that now that the ultra wealthy and gigantic investment companies have entered the game, more and more art will be coming off the walls and going to these tax-free storage facilities. They are literally incentivized to never let us see this culturally significant art ever again. Art is meant to be enjoyed. Antiquity is meant to teach us about history. Wine is meant to be drunk with friends and family to be at a party, not in a storage facility. They turned all this into nothing but a financial instrument hiding away in windowless basements. What is going on? It's disgusting, it's greedy. People, what? I'll leave you with this little tidbit. The Louvre in Paris was once a private museum for the king and his court until the people stormed it in the French Revolution. It's now enjoyed by 7.5 million people a year. That was all sure. I'll see you on the beach next time.